Hello everyone, this is Nicholas Luna, the host of the Practical Entrepreneur Show, a show that shares local entrepreneur stories about their journeys and success about being a small business owner. And welcome back to the Practical Entrepreneur Show. This is episode number 35. This is actually the last episode for 2019. I'm going to go on a hiatus because it is a busy season for me. Open enrollment is right around the corner and I just don't have any extra time to do any podcast so i will be back in january of 2020 giving you guys great interviews with great entrepreneurs uh today's guest is kemi win now she does have a presence online but this woman is a gangster she has over 20 years experience in the beauty industry started off doing manicures and pedicures and just built a solid business i hope you enjoy this episode so just so um for the people who don't know who you are yes uh, give us a little introduction of yourself who you are what's your business and um what wine are we drinking oh wow can you turn it ar- can you turn around nick yep it's a you. moscato um, c- um you said you got this at wolf Wolfgang. Yeah, I went to Wolfgang Puck in, um, you know, uh, in Vegas, and I went to his restaurant. It's called The Cut, right? Yeah, I think The Cut, and I just ordered, and I loved it. So I just bought, like, two cases. Nice. Told my wine guy, I was like, I want two cases of it. And boom, now you have it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So you are in what business? Because I see a lot of stuff here, mm-hmm. and I'm not, I mean, I think... I did a little research on you. So you're a beautician? Yes. I started out as um, a, a cosmetologist. So I, okay. I am a cosmetologist. Okay. I got my license over 20 years ago. Okay. Yeah. When I was 18. Got it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I see your very long eyelashes. Mm. So I'm assuming that is something that you do. Absolutely. I'm in the beauty industry because I love beauty. And um, I'm passionate about it. I love it. I wear it. I'm I'm a girly girl, so it's it's in me. It's in, within me. Yeah. Cool. What is uh, what got you into that? Um, I guess into the beauty industry twenty years ago. Well, <clears throat> you know, I just grew up with my my family, my mom and my aunties. They're um, you know we're immigrants, so I I think that you know the what they did was they went to beauty school. Because, you know, that's that's what, uh, I guess, Vietnamese people do. <laughs> you know, you go into the beauty industry, the nail industry. And, um, you know, my mom and my family, they were very poor. So they never had a babysitter. You know, so I, I followed them everywhere. And I I actually followed them to beauty school. So I've been there from the start, you know. Got it. Yeah. And I loved it. I love the women. I love the gossip. I just love everything about the beauty industry. So it's all... My family. That's how I got started. Gotcha. Because I know I go to the beauty salon and um, the ladies that are there are usually talking Vietnamese. Yes. And they're probably saying, well, he's so handsome. <laughs> Nick is so handsome. I get that <laughs> a little bit, but Woo-hoo! I always, I, I talk to my, my lady. Her name is Connie. Yes. Lucky I'm, lady. Right. Uh-huh. And I, I go, I go, hey, Connie, like, how do I know I'm not saying, you guys aren't saying anything mean about me? She's yeah. Like, oh, Nick, you could tell by all face. Oh, She's like, all oh, face and all oh you mean your beauty lady? Yeah. I thought you meant your lady lady. No, no, I not was my like, lady oh, lady. Oh. My be- my, my oh, yes. lady does my, my nails. Yes. She says, you could tell by their face. I'm like, yeah. okay. I go, um, do you guys ever say anything about me? She's like, oh, no, we don't say anything about you. Oh. I go, but other people, sometimes they have stinky feet. Oh, <laughs> wow. I know. They talk major shit. Can I cuss? Yes. Oh, my God. That, yeah. You know, um, you know, everybody gets, and no one should get offended because they're hardworking women. You know, I mean, if you have to deal with feet all day, you're, let them talk shit. They just need a vent, you know, yeah. but nothing malicious, you know, but they're always talking shit. Gotcha. Always talking shit. <laughs> there's this lady, um, <laughs> the place is called Tom's Nails. Yes. Mm-hmm. And there's one guy, his name is Tom, and mm-hmm. everyone else is female. And Tom has his wife there. Yes. And um, Tom's wife is, I'd say, late 50s, early 60s. Mm-hmm. But she's always dressing up. Mm. Like, always dressing up. So I told Connie, Mike, oh, I go, who's sexy mama? And she started <laughs> cracking up, right? Yeah. And she's just like, um, she's like, he goes, oh, who's sexy mama? 
I'm like, that lady. Oh. She goes, that's Tom's wife. I'm like, oh, that's so funny. Aww. So every time uh, I come in, um, Sexy Mama says hi to me. Oh, okay. Because they told her, like, oh, uh-huh. Nick, Nick called you Sexy Mama. She's like, oh, you call me Sexy Mama? <laughs> oh, I love it. It's so cute. I love it. I love it. So I'm it. very familiar with, I guess, the beauty shop culture. Yes. Because I've been, I've been going to her for... What, three, four years now. Oh wow! And what do you get done? I get a mani and a pedi. Oh yay! Yeah. I, I love, I love it. I love men that you know um, take care of themselves. I mean, it's just cleanliness. You know, everybody calls it. Oh, you're gay, dude. Nah, yeah. come on now. You got to keep yourself clean. That is just you got to keep your nails clean and your toes, you know, trimmed, and that's just sexy to me. You know? Yeah. Yeah. I know. I, I get a lot of pushback sometimes with my friend. Like, oh, you get your nails done. I'm just like. Uh, yeah, I'm uh, clean. Yeah. Good yeah. hygiene? Yeah. I, yeah, I touch my lady with those fingers. So, <laughs> I mean, come on now. <laughs> come on now. <laughs> oh, that was so straightforward. I love it. <laughs> so straightforward. That's, that's, you know, that's what I'm known for is uh, being very straightforward and, uh, you know, speaking my mind. Life's too short. Gotcha. Yeah. So you've been in the business for uh, 20 years. Over um, 20 over, years. Over 20 years. Mm-hmm. Um, when did you start doing... Eyelashes. Like, when did your actual product come out? My actual product came out about, I would say, three years ago. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And what made you, what made you want to create it? Was it something that you always wanted to do? Was it something like a need? Was it a problem? Oh, absolutely. So I'll just tell you like how I got started. I, I've been doing lashes. I mean, timeline. I would just say over thirteen years. When it first started, I've always been that type of person. Whatever's new. I'm going to go and take a class and it, it's, it's, it's either, it's either like a, a hit or miss. That's what I say. But I'm always that one that's like, oh, that's a new class. That's a new product. I'm going to go, I'm going to take a class. Either it's a hit or miss. You got to take chances in life, mm. right? If it's something that you're passionate about, which the beauty uh, industry, that's why I do everything. That's why I'm good at nails, lashes, and tattooing because anything that's new, I'm out there, I'm taking a class, right? So uh, when lashes first came out, that was over 13 years ago. I went and I took a class and I was like, whoa. But, you know, when it first started, products weren't that great, okay. you know. But I thought it was great, you know, back then. So I, I got into it and that's how I got started. And ever since then, I've taken every class that you could think of from a- any major artist and every brand there was, I would be, and I'm not cheap too. And that's what makes uh, people successful is that you got to invest in your passion and your business. So all my money went into classes and all my money went into product so I can t- just test it out because time's money gotcha. you know like if you have good product you're gonna get that clientele that you want Got it. so yeah so I just started doing it and and day and night it, it's my passion it's what I love so day and night I would practice I had no life I pretty much sacrificed a lot to get to where I am which is I didn't have any relationships. I just didn't go out. It was all about focusing on being good at what I do, at my own abilities and my own capabilities. I never compared myself to other people. So I I just focused on that, you know, and I just made sure that I would buy, like, the right product, and day and night I would practice, practice, practice. Everybody thinks it's so easy, but it's not. Once you take a class, it doesn't mean anything. It just means that you have the skill, you know, you, you, you have the technique down, but it's up to you to practice and get good at it. Got it. So I nonstop. I didn't sleep. And I, was, I don't sleep at night. Still, I have like three, four hours of sleep. And uh, day and night, I would practice until I, I got good at it, you know, to where I felt like, oh, my God, I, this, this is it right here. I'm good. You know, and, it, and um, also, too, I want to encourage people, um, it's not about the money. You're not going to make money at first. Everybody's like, I'm going to take a class and I spent this much money on it. And how about products and stuff? Oh, I spent this much. I got to make my money back. Oh, no, it doesn't work like that. You make your money back on when you get good. Mm. You know what I mean? So all that money, don't think about it. I never thought about money. All I thought about was, okay, I'm going to get good at it. And when I get good at it, that's when I'm going to charge the prices that, you know, I'm going to charge and, you know, make clients happy and all that stuff. So money comes after. Got you it. know, yeah, because th- you know that's always that misconception, right? Yeah, someone can see you, and especially with the way social media is today. Oh yeah, they're just gonna be like, oh wow, I, what does she do? And I, I want to get like that in like a year or two. I'm like, no, oh no, <laughs> it took me over 20 years. Like you know, but everybody's different. Everybody's yeah. skill level is different. Everybody's uh, uh, thought 
you know, thought process is different. So, yeah, I mean, but if you do it to your your own capabilities, your skill, if you if you know that you try the best that you can and never, ever give up, and even if you think you're good, there's always someone better than you. So never, ever stop, you know, uh, practicing or taking classes. Even if you think you're like, oh, my God, you know, I'm the best. No, you know, I'm... I, I'm very humble and um, I'm not prideful. So when I see someone that's better than me, I'm going to go to you and I'm be like, oh my, can I take a class from you? Can I learn from you? You're amazing. And I give them a shout out and I love it. I support other people in business for sure. Got it. Yeah. Early in your career, um, did you um, have any roadblocks that kind of prevented you from uh, growing? Um, if you did, how did you overcome them? Oh, wow. My roadblocks. Um, I would have to say that I never really had roadblocks until, because I always believed in myself, my roadblock was when I opened my salon and, um, and just having employees. Uh, you know, I've always been a go-getter. I've always been, you know, a workaholic uh, and I've always been a hustler as, you know, so when I had my own salon, my roadblock was people. I, I discovered that not everybody is like me. Not everybody is a hustler. Not everybody, every you know, people are entitled. People always want to think quick money, and, you know, they just want to get there so fast without, without uh, I would just say, like, uh, paying your dues. Mm. So that was my, like, it, it's a disappointment, you know. But I learned how to, like, I was just like, okay, you know what, that's you. Because I love people, and, you know, I just, uh, yeah, that was, that was, yeah, I really had no roadblock personally. It was always other people that, you know, that I was very disappointed in. But I learned how to grow, you know, because they're not me. Gotcha. Yeah. And what city was that first salon in? Um, I opened my first salon uh, in 2011, a uh, city of Redondo Beach. Uh, called Blossom Beauty Lounge. That was my first business, and I'm very proud of it. Mm-hmm. Is that is it still going now, or did it turn into this? It turned and it, it it blossomed into <sighs> this. Blossom Beauty Lounge blossomed. It it's it, it 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 started me on another path. You know, I thought you know everybody everybody's dream is to own your own business. Um, it works for some people and it doesn't. You know, it didn't work for me because uh, I'm an artist. Also, the thing is, is like. When you're an artist plus a business owner, it's kind of hard um, because, like, I was just – because I'm so passionate and I'm, I'm an artist. I'm a little crazy like that. You know, I'm just – but managing people is something else, you yeah. know. So and, – and finding good people is something else, too. So the artist in me, the perfectionist in me, it just took – Owning the business took away from my artistry mm-hmm. because then it, then it took me away. Then I had to manage people. I had to manage people who managed, you know. So that was that was something that. Uh, but I've learned a lot from it, and uh, and then what I discovered is, owning a business is not meant for me. So what I came, what I noticed was, um, you know, when I, uh, my, but I did I did the best that I could, and I I I made it very successful. After one year, I started getting uh, thank thank goodness for social media. That's when I started my Instagram and my work, you know, uh, I posted my work and it was recognized. Mm-hmm. And then I had, I was fortunate to have friends that are big major influencers in the makeup community. And, you know, they came to me and they promoted me. I promoted them. People started seeing my work. And then companies started asking me like, oh my gosh, like I love your work. Can you promote my brand? Here's a product. For here, you can have it for free. Can you, you know, shout shout me out? But I met, I always made sure that I shouted companies out that I believed in that I actually used. I'm just not like, okay, you're going to give me something. Yeah. And I'm not going to put my name on it because I'm a perfectionist like that. But I just started noticing like, wow, you know, they're giving me a product. And here I am. I'm just getting it for free. And here I am going all out, making money for you and shouting it out. But in the back, in the, it, it, you know, behind the scenes, I was like, you know, you should make this better. You know, I think this 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 could be better like that. So I was giving them free advice and and free business knowledge and all that stuff. And then, and I was just like, something in me was like, nah. Why am I, why am I promoting another brand when I'm the boss? Like I'm telling you what to do with your. I, so that's when I um and I was already giving classes and stuff. You know, 
And then I just said, yeah, I need to start my own brand. Mm. I need to start my own brand. So it, it helped me. My first business helped me going into my second business. Got it. Yeah. Now, you said you, um, you, you had a couple friends that are influencers in the makeup industry. Yes. Right? That kind of helped you get started. Absolutely. I'm um, always grateful for that. Now, because very, I mean, this is the first time I've actually had to sit down with someone who's got a really big following, but uh-huh. you probably had a successful business before you had a Absolutely. big following, right? Yes. So I always, I always <laughs> joke around with this, but my when Instagram, I first started, I mean, I was on it, wow, maybe 2011, 12, when I first kind of got on it. Mm-hmm. And I remember one of my, um, my fiance's cousin was like, oh, you're on Instagram? I'm like, yeah. How many followers do you have? I'm like, 250? <laughs> yeah. And she's just like, oh, I have a thousand. Mm-hmm. And I'm just like, okay. Uh-huh. Yeah. Like, what does that mean? I'm yeah. like, I'm like, well, do you have a good credit score? Like, yeah. Right? Exactly. <laughs> oh know, my like, gosh. Do you have paid customers? Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, like. I know. Numbers yeah. don't mean anything. No. If they don't, if they don't pay your bills. No. And you've actually, you know, you have a lot of substance, right? Like you're like, mm-hmm. I'm a business owner first. Before, yep. Yeah. Oh my God, Nick, you are so smart. Can uh, we just talk about that right now? Uh, People nowadays, social media is like, um, it's not about the numbers, you know. This is where everybody is so blindsided by social media. It's like, it's not about the number of followers. You can have number, you can have as much uh, numbers of followers, but are you really living it? Are you really doing it? Because in a business, are you really making, you own a business, right? Does it depend? It doesn't depend on how many followers. Are you making money in your business? You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It's not about the followers. It's about the, the real success of your business business, the main business, you know, more followers. Yeah, it helps. But like, what are you doing? Like, okay. Uh, yeah, you're an Instagram model or like you have so many followers, but really, are you really, are you really making money off of it? Are you really doing the, I'm just saying, like, a lot of people, I know people rent Bentleys. I know people rent bags. I know that l- people are just living with their mama and then just front, like, you know, like, in front of a house. Like, I I give props to, um, it's not about the fault. It's about the real, the real deal, the real person, the real success of your, your outside business and just not on Instagram. And I know a lot of people buy their followers, too, you know? I mean, you know, a lot of people are getting outed on you know, on Instagram too, like, oh shit, like, oh yeah, she really don't have that. Oh yeah, that's that's someone else's house or that's someone else's, you know. And I'm out here to encourage people um, to just focus on, don't focus on the followers, focus on the success of your business, your actual business, and not on Instagram. That's not where it's all at. Got it. Yeah. I know because um, yeah. with social media and the number being there and everyone like, looks at it it's like it's like a metric oh you only got this this and that i'm just yeah. like uh, it doesn't really quite matter that that number doesn't really matter no my business doesn't really rely on it and at the end of the day yeah. instagram could be like my my space and just kind of disappear and exactly what are you gonna do what yeah. is your purpose on there like what what you know like you're an accountant like really does is, is this i'm gonna help your accounting <laughs> like really Okay. <laughs> so kind of going back to, um, I guess, your your beauty skills. Where do you kind of see um, the beauty industry kind of going in the future? Uh, beauty industry is major, especially makeup. I mean, women. Um, beauty industry is, it's well, it's getting saturated. You know, it's getting really saturated. But, you know, like I said, everybody... You know, no matter how saturated it is, never give up on your dreams. You just got to, like, be smart about it, and you just got to hustle, and you just got to put, put yourself out there, you know, take advantage of it. And um, I think that the makeup industry, beauty industry is major. Um, no, there was, everybody was, like, during the time when there was a recession, I'm like, what recession? Like, what? Women are always going to want to look, you know? It's not like you're buying, like, a house, you know? Yeah. You got to look beautiful, for yourself as a woman, you always want to take care of yourself. I don't think women are going to ever, you know, not let themselves go. Like, you know, makeup. <laughs> I mean, it's not like, like I said, not like oh, you're we're buying in a recession a, right now. I'm not going to wear any makeup. Yeah, no. <laughs> we're in a recession right now. Oh, uh, I'm just going to, you know, knock out my hair, yeah. hair done. I'm going to get not my roots go get grow. My nails done. No, yeah. 
You know, I think they would let other surfaces go before, you know, they look crazy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's it's uh-huh. really interesting when um before, I mean, I guess social media. Mm-hmm. Uh I really never paid attention to the makeup industry. Uh-huh. But now with social media um playing a really big making a difference in the in the community like makeup tutorials. Oh, absolutely. Do you see the drama? Like every like drama. How let's talk about YouTube drama. Everybody speak their truth and then you're like, it's on the news. It's like, you know? So, I mean, right? <laughs> yes. You notice that, right? Yes. When an influencer fucks up or like you know, they're talking their truth and everybody's like, did you know that Jeffree Star, Kim yeah. K? And you, you can see it's big when celebrities like have their own makeup line. Rihanna, yeah. Kim K, Kylie. It's a big industry. Kylie made billions off of it on Forbes. Like, yeah. you know, you know, it's big when when it hits celebrities, when celebrities want to do it. Yeah. You know, and they pretty much built it. Yeah. Built their following and stuff for free on these Did, platforms. Yeah. Technically. Yeah. So mm. that's why, you know, I, I, I'm like, wow, I've never, you know, YouTube was completely different when it first came out in 2006, 2007, when I re- remember it when I first came out. Yeah. But now it's a, the second biggest search engine. And like yeah. makeup tutorials is yes. like, oh my goodness. I don't know if you remember her. This is the first makeup person I remember back in the day on YouTube. And she kind of has a, she has a decent uh, mm-hmm. Twitter following, Dulce. Uh huh. Candy, um, her name is Dulce. At du- at, at Dulce. Dane. No. Uh-huh. No. Nope. Okay. Dane. I suck. I gotta show you. She, she's okay. Maybe if you show me her face, like I'll like. I'll show it to you after. Okay. Yeah. But I, right. I remember mm-hmm. her being the very first one, and then now she's like one of many. Yeah. Have you ever um, did any makeup tutorials um, on YouTube, or have you ever worked with anyone that has ever done any of that? For your business? Um, I just know a lot of influencers because this, this is how I got to know them, for, fortunately. Um, you know, because I always love makeup. And, um, but, you know, I, I used to, uh, I started out, you know, my, my um, first salon, Blossom Beauty Lounge, it was known for nail art. You know, it's a high-end uh, salon and nail art. And then so all the, the beauty ins- influencers loved my nail work. Mm. So that's, they came to me. And then I was like, girl, oh, my God. Like, all the major influencers, and I'm blessed, and I'm, I'm very humbled by, you know, having them come to me, and I got a chance to promote them, and they promoted me, and they got me started on my whole... That's how I was known, because of, think, thankfully, through them, you got know? It. So I, I always love makeup, and to have them come to me, and, you know, and then... They're always like, and I'm good at, I'm, I think I'm really good at makeup. Like, you know, that's why I'm like, oh, but I could have pursued it. I could have, like I said, you know, know them and pursued in makeup. And I, I really wanted to do my own YouTube because I feel like I have the skills and the personality to do it. But guess what? I spent my life in the beauty industry. I wanted to, I'm a business owner. I'm going to focus on my business first before, because I'm I'm built like that. Like I started my business first. It wasn't like, you know, because influencers, they go in and, you know, they have to work really hard and you got to give it up to YouTube. Everybody wants to be a YouTuber, but that's like life. That's work in itself, you know? So I couldn't own a business and do YouTube at the same time. That's why I respect influencers. I respect makeup artists and I respect YouTubers because they got to work really hard having content every day people understand you need the the personality and you need the skills yeah and people don't know that they're just like oh they're just putting on makeup no it's not it right so I just feel like yeah like you know I could have done it but I had a business first and I'm lucky and I'm so fortunate that I pursued it and that's why I could have had more followers I could have gone on this level but my passion is how I grew up and that's the beauty industry that's lash, you know, having a company that's like lashing, tattooing, and, you know, just playing up my skills. Got I it. already have a skill. Yes. Mm-hmm. Now, you said you, um, the influencer sought you off for your nail art. Yes. How long do you think it took you to get to get noticed for your nail art? Wow. Instant. Really? Instantly. I mean, I've, I've been, like I said, I've been in the beauty industry. I've been taking classes. And when I opened my salon, I... 
I was, it was very unique and different, you know? People, people can't, a lot of people can't do nail art, and I specialized in it. And I've been on uh, covers of, you know, Nails Magazine, uh, you know, just major, you know, Nails Magazines and Nail Pro. I've been in uh, two major uh, U.S. nail magazines. So, you know, I, I'm so blessed that they just recognized me. And it's off of social media. That's why. They saw my work on Instagram. And they contacted me. And that's how I got started. So I've, I've been in every, and I'm proud to say, and I'm, I'm very honored that I've been in, in every magazine, every beauty magazine in the United States. I've done covers and my salon, you know, uh, for the decor, my salon, just everything. You know, I'm, I'm very, I did, I did, I, I think I did pretty good for just a year being in the business. I was already known for, you know, my artistry and the beauty of my salon, how, you know, yeah. So that's pretty awesome because sometimes it takes people a little bit longer. Five years or 10. <laughs> Realistically, you hear my story, but I just want everybody to know that it's okay. If you have kids, you have a family, whatever. I just had, I, it was just, I've sacrificed everything. I, I don't have any kids. Um, you know, I, I sacrificed not having a relationship or kids or anything like that. I put a hundred, I would say a thousand percent in my business and in my career. And that's how I did it. But there's a lot of times, you know, when you have kids, you got to take care of them or you have, uh, you know, um, you know, you just have uh, things that you have to take care of. But me, it was just me, my, you know. So, yeah. Well, Kobe yeah. said it, um, how, you know, like this. So I'm a little like, buzzed. So, uh, I know how to say it. Uh, you <laughs> say it for me. Yeah. <laughs> no, but Kobe, I don't know if you ever heard him say, he goes, uh, friends come and go, but championships, championships last forever. Yes. Wow fucking go Kobe that's what I said <laughs> and that kind of reminds me because yes. Kobe Kobe didn't okay. have he didn't have a lot of friends yeah and then he'd be on the tr- on the plane and you don't fucking need books him and things like that <laughs> yes so he wasn't really being social hanging out with the team and the team was like why are you hanging out with us he's just yeah like, no I'm just yeah and he, he shares that afterwards is like I was preparing for my next life after basketball yes I wanted to become wow and be in business yeah and I knew if I yeah, hung out and did the whole team camaraderie. It would focus, yeah. and like I said, you were, he was just so focused yeah. on that. And it, a lot of people don't see the the sacrifice. They kind of just see yeah. the highlights, and they kind of want to live it. But no, but there's a lot of sacrifice. Absolutely. Now, let's just say there's someone that's listening. Mm-hmm. She's 22 years old, mm-hmm. sees what you have, wants it. Uh, what's the first piece of advice that you would tell her? You can't have it unless you work for it. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> like, um, I, would, I would just say that, you know, I would just, just tell her, like, just don't, don't just ask me. Just start. Just do it. Don't just sit here and waste my time because the only advice I'm going to give you is that you need whatever you want to do. Like, if you want to start, why don't you start with beauty school? The first step is get your license. Mm. And then after that, go to classes, work on your skills. But you got to take that first step first before you even talk to me. You know what I mean? Can't just like, you know, a lot of people, and, and you know, I'm not trying to be like mean or I'm not trying to, you know, it's just that if, if you were really serious about it, you know, I would just, when I give advice to people, I'm just like, let me just, t- let's take it step by step. Let's just do the first step. When you're finished with that, then come to me again after your beauty school. That's how I would tell people. Got but it. I'm not going to tell you this whole story because it's a waste of time. Yeah, because people ask you, pick your brains, but it's a waste of time because you need to do it. You know, after yeah. you finish, and then I'll be like, oh, oh, dang, you really did it. Okay, well then, uh, well, how many classes are you going to take? What classes? I'm going to tell you what classes to take, right? Yeah. That's, I mean, that's pretty straightforward and it's yeah. true. Because a lot of yeah. people, I mean, they um, want to hear. Mm-hmm. Um, they like hearing it. They like getting, feeling motivated and inspired. But yes. when you actually got to do the work. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> that's yeah. not fun and inspiring. Exactly. Sometimes. So, yeah. and it's, and that's a very good point. You're like, you know what? Go do that and then talk to me. That's, yeah. That kind of separates people from who's real and who's not. Absolutely. And when they, yeah, when they, they said it, they come back, oh, I got this, I did this, and this. Oh, okay. Yep. 
You're for real. You're for real. Yeah, show me. I'm all about showing me because no one gave me anything. I've never asked for anything in life. I've never ha- had a free handout. I, it's in my personality to do everything by myself. So I've had friends that, you know, um, people that are successful, I never look at them as a, as a free handout. I'm always looking at them and whatever advice they want to give me is golden to me. And I, I'm like, wow, it, it's, it means more to me than money because experience is what is priceless. People who the experience is like they've they've gone through ups and downs. They've spent a lot of money and they've did a lot of sacrifices. So you just got to appreciate it. And then just don't expect people to just, you know, when you ask them, don't expect them to just, bleh, you know, spit, you know, tell you everything, you know. So I always, um, you know, people, successful people, when I look at them, like whatever field I'm trying to be in, I would Google it and I would research it like, okay. I, this class, wow, I'm going to, this class, how, how am I going to take the class? Like, what do I need to save up to take the class? So I do everything step by step. I don't think ahead like that. I do everything in, by step, each step, you know, but I, I, I do it. I don't just think about it. I, I take the leap of faith and I just do it. You've tried a lot of different things. Mm-hmm. What are some of the things that didn't work out that you thought were going to work out? Wow. You know, so I basically took a lot of classes and, you know, like um, a couple, a couple classes that I, that I thought was going to work out. Like, you know, I was like, I can do this. You know, I'm really good at this. Like skill wise, like, like waxing. Okay. So waxing, I, I, I took, a, I took several classes and, and I just discovered that I'm just not good in waxing. Like I just cannot wax coochie. I just cannot wax like, and <laughs> so <laughs> I try to keep a straight face. I like I just I just can't wax. Oh, that was awesome. I just can't wax pussy <laughs> or dick. Like I just you know like <laughs> trying to tell someone to hold their balls and hold your balls while I rip your fucking skin off of your balls. I mean it's just yeah I, I just I just couldn't do it. I just couldn't do it. Yeah I wax the waxing didn't work out for me. Microblading didn't work out for me okay. uh, because. <laughs> <laughs> because like when I was uh, taking microblading classes, I just felt like I was just like, like I was just slicing someone's skin. So it's just something that it's very popular and you, you make money off of it. But I know that it's not my thing. Mm-hmm. I, I just couldn't do it. And the result for me, uh, I just did. I just don't like the result because realistically microblading, when you do it, it just depends on, you know, everybody's uh, skin type. So either it works or it doesn't. I'm that type of person who, who, um, who likes, like, uh, like, good results for everything, you know. So explaining, if I have to explain a lot about something, I just don't, you know. So there are certain things that I'm really good at, but if I'm not comfortable, I'm not going to do it. Got it. So I only do things that I actually love or passionate about. But when I first, you know, when you start, first start in the industry, you need to make money. So, and you do things that you're, you don't feel comfortable or, or, or feel like, you know, just like women, um, when you're a manicurist, do you want to do pedicures? It's not their passion to fucking do feet or, you know, look at feet all day, but you have to do it because you have to make that money, Got you it. know? Mm-hmm. So I'm just very fortunate to, when I first started out, I had to do what I had to do, but then that's when you work hard to, to, to surpass that. If you don't want to do pedicures, then do something else. But during that time, you got to do what you have to do. So, you know, so it, wor- it, it works out or it doesn't. If it doesn't work out, then I'm on the next. But, you know, got I have it. to hustle to get there. Yeah. It's true. Uh, you know, I, I, I mean, when I'm hearing you, you're, you're preaching to the choir. But, man, yeah. just hearing it from someone that's gotten, who's built a really big, you know, business, you know, reputation, brand, things like mm-hmm. that. When you're just like, yeah, I had to do what I had to do. Yeah. You have to do what you have to do. Like, you know, people are like, a lot of people are like, oh, oh, okay. Well, uh, you know, you just moved out of your house and uh, you want, okay, I get it. You want to be a fucking famous uh, DJ. You want to be the most famous DJ. But what are you going to do in between? Be a waiter. You got to wait on people. You got to do, you know, you got to do services. You got to do what you have to do to make that money. Before you, you, you know, you want to chase after your dreams and all that. But you, you have to take care of your responsibilities. You have to do what you have to do. And uh, do, do it and, and do it with motivation. I know a lot of people like that go to work and, you know, you can see it. 
that they don't like it and they make you miserable. Shit, yeah. you know, like if you're in the service industry, like do the best that you can because you, what you put out there, like negativity, it just fucks up people's days, you know. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I believe in like I, I was, uh, you know, when I was doing I started off doing pedicures, you know, at my mom's salon. I mean, did I like it? No, I didn't. But I did it to because I was just like, this is my money and people are paying me just because I don't like it. But I, you're giving me money and you're 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 making it happen for me. So I fuck, I was like, yes, I'm going to do the best ped pedicure that I can do. And I'm going to be nice to people and I'm going to just, you know, make it work. I've, you always want to have a positive attitude. Yeah. But I know that I, I just don't understand how people, you know, you. You, you got to do what you got to do, but then you're miserable and you make other people miserable. You know, do it with a smile because you're, you're, you're going to know. Do it with a smile because you're at least you're taking the steps. At least you're 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 paying your bills with it. You're be happy that you're going to get to where you're going to be. And then this is where you have to be now. But how are you going to skip to something when you haven't even started it? You know? Yeah. Yeah. And that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Now, your your parents are immigrants. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. You're a woman. Yes. Uh you're a minority in business, right? Like yes. You're immigrant women, there's not too... I, I, from even just podcast guests, it's so hard to find women in business. Yeah. Um, when you first started, did you see that as an advantage or disadvantage, being a female business owner? It's an advantage because, you know, I wasn't given anything and I had to, as a minority, you go through a lot of racism and you go, you go through a lot of like, you know, ups and downs, you know, people treat you differently, you know, because, you know, I, I grew up like, like poor, you know, I know, I know how it feels like, you know, people, my mom's an immigrant, my family's an immigrant. I, I saw how people treated her, you know, when she did like nails and she made no money and, you know, but she's a good person. I'm a good person. You know, it makes you stronger. You know, I, I grew up like working in the hood, like doing nails in Compton. So, <laughs> you know, it was just like, I, I'm used to it. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm used to like being strong. You know, it teaches you how to like be strong uh, when you work for nothing, you know. So to me, it was normal. Like I was just, uh, uh, you, you, it just makes you stronger, you know, going through a lot of situations like I would do I would spend like an hour doing a pedicure for freaking seven dollars and this bitch runs out on me. I'm like, did you, just, you know, and then it was just like I was just like, OK, whatever. You know, it, it was just something normal, you know, and then uh, it taught me a lot. It taught me to be strong. It taught me people skills. It made me smarter because I had to deal with a lot of shady people. And then so being in, you know, you know, working in the hood and then and then, you know, just going and then having a change, like now working at upscale salons, you know, and then now I'm just like from listening from people running <laughs> from people not paying me to now people paying me. But they them treating me as a, like like shit because I'm Asian, like I do a service and, you know, all these these wealthy women they now I, I have I have a different type of uh, um, I just have a now now people are treating me different as in like, OK, you have money now you you whatever car you drive or what bag you drive or, or these are these are women who who don't even who don't even work, who are married to wealthy men and whatnot. And then I don't know why, but you should be happy if you're not fucking working and you drive a nice car and you have nice things. Why are you treating me like shit? I never understood that. You know, I was working my ass off and it was just like, just because I do nails, you don't respect me. Just because I do a service for you, you're going to treat me like shit. You should treat, I, that's why I, you treat people, that's why I, you treat people how you want to be treated. And I just got discriminated on by a lot of people who just felt like, you know, just because they were married to someone rich or whatever car they drove or whatever bag they drove, they thought they were better than me, you know? So I always work hard and, and no matter how much money I have, you know, that's why material things, it turned me off from it. That's why, like, you never, ever see me on the gram with, uh, you know, like, nice things. or I, I don't care about that because I grew up with nothing, and I was discriminated by all these women that had it when, you know, I'm a better person than you are as a human being. So I, I just, 
you know, being a minority and, and just, just growing up like Asian and, you know, working in, in the beauty industry, it just taught me a lot. It just taught me like, and, and being treated like shit just because I did nails, or I did your pedicure, I did your feet and you can treat me however. And that's just wrong. You know, I'm doing a service for you, dude. Like, I'm not your slave. Yeah. Slavery's fucking gone, dude. Like, you know, so I, that's why, you know, I, I'm very passionate about it. I, I hate it when, um, that's why I'm all about artists. And I'm always for the people in the industry because I knew how hard, I just know how, like, I get emotional because I was treated like shit, you know, um, you know, being in the nail industry and uh, by women that just it, were entitled they didn't want to pay me after doing nails for like, after doing your feet for an hour. And, and just because, you know, you didn't like the paint and they would just treat me like shit. Like, I don't like the color. Like, eh, I don't like the shape. And I just never got that attitude, you know, like, where does it come from? So that's why I treat people the way that's what, when, when I go to a restaurant, I treat, I, I don't care if you're a waiter, a dog walker, if you're nice to me, I'm going to be good to you. That's why I never, ever look at people like how, just because you have money and you're still a fucking asshole, you're an asshole. It doesn't matter. So that's where I'm coming from. I'm all about the people because I'm the people. I'm the minority. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and I never understood it either. I fuck these don't... bougie bitches. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> fuck these bougie bitches. Who the fuck do you think you are? Coming, in, coming into the nail salon. What the fuck? With their fancy cars and fancy What the bags. fuck? Cheers yeah. That. Cheers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah I almost shed a tear talking about it I hate it when people get mistreated you know just because they're in the service industry I just hate it yeah it's not about the money it's about the human being it's about who you are yeah, yeah. I remember one time I, I kind of can relate to that um, when I had graduated college yeah and it was just like ooh, it's just like it is what it is but you know I don't know if it's different for men Men have an ego, right? They want to compete with each other. They always want to one-up each other. Yeah. I graduated college, and I couldn't, um, I wasn't doing so well. So I couldn't, I wasn't finding a job in my field. So I was mm-hmm. like, oh, man, like I had a car payment. I had a credit card. I'm just like, I got bills to pay. And I was just like, oh, I don't want to work at a restaurant, but I have this opportunity. Yeah. And I remember my older sister, I uh, reached out to my older sister, like, ah, should I do it? Like, I just graduated college, you know, because they sold me this idea. Yeah. Right? graduated college people should be calling me yeah everyone should be calling me for for a job yeah. i'm a skilled person it doesn't work out that way yeah so <laughs> you know i told him like you know should i should i go do this he's like oh you mm-hmm. got to pay your bills right yeah you got to go do it yeah i'm like all right so i just um did it and went. i actually worked at wood ranch shout out to wood ranch thank you very much uh-huh. um <laughs> and one of the things that i appreciated because my my dad worked in, in in a restaurant. He was a chef for a very long time. He's like mm-hmm. Nick. This should, there's no shame in working, doing anything, right? You're mm-hmm. earning your money. You're not doing anything illegal. I go, but the, one of the best things about working in a restaurant is that one, you're gonna go home with probably a little bit of cash, and two, mm-hmm. you're gonna have food in your stomach. Yes. Two two for one. I remember one time I was working, and um, I get to a table and I see a buddy from high school, mm-hmm. and then he sees me. He's like, Nick, and mm-hmm. I'm like, Yeah. He's like, I thought you went to CSUN. I'm like, oh, yeah, I did. I, I just graduated. Uh-huh. And he's like, why are you working here? And I was just like, uh, the shade, Nick. I was the like, the shade. Oh, I was just like, <laughs> you know, at that time, right? Because yeah. 22, 23, mm-hmm. still not very confident in myself. And, you know, yeah. I'm vulnerable, right? And yeah. I was just like, oh, this fucking dick. <laughs> I'm just like, you know, it just was what it I was yeah. just like, so, you know, I just got to, you know, work here, you know? Yeah. Ended up being one of the funnest jobs I've ever had in my life, Aww. you know? Because, yeah. you know, I, I loved it. It was just fun. You, yeah. You, I, I deliver, you know, I, I wasn't a server. I was a food runner. Yeah. So I, I run the food over. Yeah. But I liked it. But, you know, I, I'll never forget that moment because I was just like, mm-hmm. all right, we'll see how this plays out. Yeah. You know, this is part of the process. I need to do what I needed to do. Yep. I wasn't asking for any money. I needed to earn it. Yes. But like all these little things that happened to me helped me get to where, and then I'm not going to, I can work, I can operate with very little. Yeah. So that helped me just learn to tune things out. Yes. Like, you know what? Opinions don't pay my bills. 
Exactly. Opinions do not pay your bills. Opinions don't at pay all. Your bills. Mm-hmm. So um, when I had a, you know, I went through that couple years, I just kind of went through a little spot uh, where I couldn't afford rent and my car payment and my, my credit card bills. But like, you know what? Yeah. Screw it. So I sold my car. <laughs> I didn't have my car for a year in LA. Fuck it. You know? Mm-hmm. It, Take it the was, bus. It yeah. was what it was, right? Yeah. So Where's the I homies? Lived on the, lived mm-hmm. on the bus. But that time frame, that mm-hmm. one year that it took me to do it, set the foundation for my life. I've Aww. never had a problem with debt. Yeah. So it's given me so much flexibility. Mm. You know, and a lot of times people don't, you know, think like, oh, well, well, how are you able to do all that? I'm like, remember that one year when you didn't want to talk to me? Oh, <laughs> shit. <laughs> you know, so uh-huh. I, I understand that. And, and I, again, I, I don't understand mm. why would someone would be so mean to anyone in any industry. In any industry. It's just, it doesn't make any sense. Yeah. And people who are like that, like, I just tune them out. Like, I, I just don't give a fuck. Like, you know, people who look at people because of their job titles, because of money, because of what they drive, what they wear and all that. I've learned, you guys, I mean, I, I've learned I'm always in sweats. And I'm always in flip-flops and sweats and my slides. And whenever I go somewhere, I get discriminated all the time. Like, I could walk into, like, a Louis Vuitton store, and I've got discriminated a lot of times. I'm walking in there because I'm going to go buy something. But do I need a dress up? To Like, no. So I get discriminated all the time, and I just hate people like that because, you know, what matters to me is, like, what's in my bank account? Not, you know what I mean? So... Whatever. Uh, I just learn to block it out. But, you know, what I have what I need to tell people and what people need to know is that never, ever try to impress. I, I live by, I don't, I don't need to impress anybody. I don't need to wear any designer clothing and I don't need to, to, to just show off, you know. I, what, what makes me is I want to see money in my bank account. I want to see, I want... I, I know that my future is going to be golden. Investments, all my sacrifices, all my money goes into my future money. So, you know, there's a lot to be learned, like, about finances. I encourage women when they make money, you know, when you make money, you don't want to just go out there and, like, you know, buy yourself, like, $1,000 bags and stuff when you don't own a home or you don't have any future savings. That's what I'm all about. You know what I mean? Yeah, and they so, don't teach that in school and yeah. people a lot of... A lot of times they want to get something fancy. Yeah. They, you know, I mean, I'm like, no, yeah. you got to reinvest it back in your business. You have to reinvest <laughs> it back yeah. in your business. And, and, you know, it pays off. And it's going to take a lot of years and a lot of, you know, I don't know. Everybody's different when it comes to, like, how long it's going to take. But, you know, I've always, um, you, when uh, owning my own business, I, um, yeah, I, I never took out money for anything personal. I never took out money for a nice bag or anything like that because that's thousands of dollars that I could pay for my health insurance and, you know, just uh, my, um, you know, just, uh, uh, oh, gosh, I, I was just investing my money everywhere, diversifying it everywhere. I was like, I have homes, I have stocks, I have, you know, so many things that I di- diversified my money in. It's just not just one thing. So, uh, I, you know, everybody was going on vacation, you know, <laughs> having relationships and, you know, driving whatever and having nice things. I was, I didn't care because I knew that all my money I put in like a thousand dollars, I'm going to get my money back instead of wasting it. You know, my money was coming back to me and I was inside i was very proud of myself and you know it pays off to sacrifice yeah nice uh you had meant you were as you were talking <laughs> I, I thought of a question that i, I wanted to ask you yeah oh uh, man i just i just don't like it talking about it in that spot uh, yeah oh man i'm gonna take a little break drink some wine okay yeah it me too, yeah back to me oh how was the live Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we should go on all my social media, especially um, the Cami, Cami underscore the most fault Cami underscore underscore Nguyen. Yeah, 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 yeah that one. Uh, that, yeah, I'm definitely gonna post it on that, uh, and uh, also Cami Rose Blossom. So we're gonna shout you out all the way. Awesome. And I'm gonna tell everyone listening and shit. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you, 
I mean, and just we're gonna take a, we're gonna take a, and I need you to take a video. So while we're talking, so that's the video that I'm gonna introduce, like that I'm gonna post up. So the video of us, okay, like, you know, did you get? You got it right when we're talking. Okay, perfect. Oh man, I mean, just from, just from sitting here and just hearing you, mm-hmm. um, underscore underscore Nia, he, hearing you talk about how people, I mean, it's just, it's insane because I can relate to it. I've I've been discriminated, still do. Yeah. You know, um, when mm. I still can't talk, I don't want to say I don't I don't think someone of European descent mm-hmm. still takes me serious. Yeah. On certain, you know, I you mm-hmm. obviously can relate to that. Yeah. It's a little frustrating. But um, yeah, we're going to move past that. Let's have a little more fun. Yeah. Okay. So it seems like you're a workaholic. I am a workaholic. Um, <laughs> I, can, I can relate because I love what I do, and I don't like to take breaks. And yeah. I know the saying is, like, work so hard you forget how to vacation. I've got, I think I've gotten to that point, but I do understand that taking a break is mm-hmm. super important for yeah. your creativity to you know, kind of yes. rejuvenate. What, when you're not working and you need to take some cami time Mm -hmm. what are you doing wow um what i do is i like to sleep in you know and uh i really don't like vacations like i never really liked vacations because vacation to me was hard work like i gotta pack because i'm already working (laughs) packing (laughs) alone is hard work i gotta pack now i really gotta think about what i need to bring like what? So I got a pack that takes a day. You got to go on the plane. It takes like, you know, and then like you just have a couple of days. But um, for me, it's sleeping in and watching movies. Mm-hmm. And that to me is everything. And also going to, I, I, I hate clubs. I hate partying. Um, you know, I like to go out with my true friends, good friends, have a glass of wine, eat good food, you know, with good company. And that's how I, you know, but... No I, vacation? What? Like that stresses me out. <laughs> like I don't. That was you funny. Know? <laughs> vacation is work. Vacation <laughs> is work, and then you know, and then it depends on the people that you go with. Yeah. Oh Lord, if you go with the wrong person, they're gonna stress you the fuck out. Yeah. Yeah. So they can kind of put a damper on your vacation. Yes. Like, <laughs> like they're in control or chill out or you know, you just oh I don't know, but um, yeah. <laughs> I know my my fiance is gonna love it because she loves to sleep in uh-huh. and oh. she loves to watch movies. Yes, I watch movies because of her. I watch shows because of her. Stuff that I would never watch. Yeah, in my life. And every time I'm like, I love getting up early. Yeah. So I'm like six o'clock. I'm like, oh my goodness. And I'm like, I'm doing something. Oh. And she likes to get out of bed like uh-huh. eight thirty nine, maybe ten. Yeah. She's like, what are you doing up so early? Yeah. And I'm always like. Why are you still in bed? <laughs> <laughs> but it, I, I guess, you know, everyone likes to relax and yeah. uh, recharge your batteries Yeah, um, differently. I'm boring. I, I'm, I'm the most, you know, it just looks like, you know, I'm, I'm very, I think I'm very, I'm very boring. I'm, I'm, I'm the most boring person. But if uh, you'll see me lit when, you know, I'm lit when I'm at an event. When I'm 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 at my a I'm at my a game I'm at my funnest when you know I'm at an event that that has to do with my industry. Got That's it. when I'm like woo! But then business is business, fun is fun. People don't know how to separate that, you know. So I when I'm working, I'm working. But when I when I'm off and I have fun and it's a business like event, I'm I'm gonna turn up. So I separate the two. You know, you just that's what I do. Yeah. Got it. Mm-hmm. Any last thing you want to say to anyone who's listening about yourself that they may have, they, they probably don't know, or, or just even just a tip? Um, never judge a book by its cover. Uh, never, ever judge a book by its cover. You, you know, you don't know about people. Um, you know, I think uh, time. I think time is everything, you know, to me. Uh, I always want to give, you know, from what I've learned, I've always want to give. Um, you can't just trust someone off the bat. You can't judge someone off the bat. You can't trust them off the bat. And you just can't go into business with someone, like, off the bat. I say everything takes time to get to know someone, to, to um, be good at what you do. Uh, you know, only time can tell, like, what a what a person's true character is. So, 
that's kind of like um, that's the one big advice that I would give someone. And uh, also, too, you have to pay your dues in anything that you do. Nothing comes easily. Nothing should come easily, you know. But when it comes easily, you don't appreciate it. If you don't, like, start from the bottom to the top, then you don't have a foundation. And when you, you don't have a foundation and you start to, to grow and you start to, you know, get, get fast money, it's not going to last because you're going to, you, you didn't start from the bottom, so you're not, not going to know what to do with it. You're going to fuck up, you know. But when you start from the bottom to the top, you're humble, you've gone through some shit, then you're going to know, like, you know, how to stabilize and keep it, you know, humble and, you know, stay grounded. Gotcha. You know, so, yeah, I, I always believe in, like, uh, I respect people more when they have to work hard to get to where they're at. And it's, I, I respect people who who have have nothing and then, you know, they come up from nothing. Not just, I hate free handouts. I hate, I, I hate it when, um, you know, people are given something so freely and like, here, take it here. Here's here's an opportunity. Just just because you're given an opportunity doesn't mean that you're going to make it, you know. So I just respect like hustlers. I just respect people who, you know, didn't come from anything, from nothing. And they built it. And then they're there. And we can talk. I can talk with you. I can relate to you. But I can't relate to anybody who who is given something like freely, who just, who I can't talk to someone when, um, what bothers me is like, you know, it's not that I, I'm a woman in business and I, w I like to help other women. I like to help people, but people, people need to understand that there is no free handout with me because I never was given anything. And a lot of people, the wrong way to approach me is like a lot of people get into my DMs and a lot of people approach me right when they meet me. They're like, oh my God, Cammy, I love you. You're so fucking cool. Like, I love you so much. And, and you know, and I, and then I'm like, thanks, you know, because that's how I am. I, I give people praise. And the next thing they ask me is, you know, I want to start my own brand. I want to start my own company. Like, can you give me, if it's okay if you're like, you know, I want to start my own shit, Cammy. I want to, I want to be like you. I, I, I want to, that your goals, you know? And then it's the, it's the right way to approach me and the wrong way to approach me. You can be like, how, Cami, how did you get started? That's the right way of asking me. How did you get started? But do not ever ask me. Do not ever ask me. Cami, I want to start my own brand. Can you give me your contacts? Like, can you, can you tell me, like, where you get your shit? Can you, because... Can you tell me, like, how, uh, you know, uh, give, give me, like, uh, all your information, all your company information? Like, bitch, what? <laughs> it's like, okay, well, uh, why don't you give me your grandmother's fucking recipe for the fucking lasagna? It's a family recipe. Like, you know, like, it's just boundaries that, you yeah. know, because no one ever helped me. Like, if you want to, that's audacious. That's, that's like, you know, trying to, like, I don't know you for shit, and you're asking me for what? When, when it took me years to do my research on something, it's, it's my uh, proprietary information. People don't know. People cross boundaries all the time. You need to know your boundaries when it comes to that, you know? It's, it's just certain things you, you don't want to cross boundaries with me, like especially uh, someone that is self-made, someone that has never asked anybody for their business information or anything you know i just give people praise and if you want if you want to know something take a class i'll teach you but not for free nothing is for free so if you want to learn from me take a class yeah and if you if you want to know how i did it, google it yeah i'm just going to tell you like just go out and do it you know, nice. Google that shit. <laughs> Want to leave your your Instagram <laughs> handles so they know how to get to yeah. uh, fo follow you, not DM you for free stuff. Don't DM me, you guys, yeah. and be like, no shame. Oh, that's some boundaries, some respect. Some, yeah, you know, like no free handouts here. <laughs> oh, I, I oh, you know, it's like, hey, what's the secret? It's like, uh, you know, going to McDonald's and shit. What's the secret to your fries? You know, <laughs> how? Um, really? I'm going to give you my uh, billion dollar like secret. Hell no. Nah. You know, but I try to be, I just don't, uh, I just don't even answer that question. I, I avoid, I, I avoid people in every single way because I don't want to sound 
you know, I don't want people, if they're not on that level, they're not going to understand. And I don't want to sound bitchy or whatever, because if you're not on, on that level, then you don't understand. But, you know, if you're on that level, then you're totally going to not cross boundaries and understand what I'm talking about. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. Yep. So uh, how can people find you? How can people find me? Uh, yeah, Google me. Cammy Wing. Mm -hmm. C-A-M-M-Y. <laughs> Last name is N-G-U-I-E-N. <laughs> Just Google me. No. <laughs> yeah, my, my Instagram. Mm -hmm. So my Instagram is uh, Cammy Wing, LLC. I have a, a couple Instagrams, and I have Cammy Loves Blossom. And uh, I have uh, Cami underscore underscore Nguyen. Yeah. So those are my three Instagrams that you can find me on. And if you Google me, you'll you'll see my history. Gotcha. Yeah. Awesome. Cami, thank you so much. You're welcome. I think this is probably one of the best podcast interviews I've ever had. Wow. Really? Um, that yeah. you, I, you can feel <laughs> like. I felt like I went through that journey with you. Oh, wow. When okay. The, when yeah. the lady walked out of you after you mm -hmm. spent an hour doing her nails, ah! I, I, I'm like, oh, I, I can I, I can feel that. And then when you moved up into a nicer neighborhood and you mm -hmm. had to deal with a different oh. animal, it's just, someone who just looked at you like, you're doing my feet. Yeah. Like, I just, like, mm -hmm. I felt it. So thank you so much. I hope the people who are watching and listening learned from Cammie. Yeah. Um, nothing comes easy. Yeah. And don't get into the DMs and ask for dumb shit. <laughs> that part. <laughs> that part. Thank you so much. Yeah, Cam. thank you, Nick.